Welcome back. In this lecture, we will introduce you to machine learning operations. By the end of this lecture, you should be able to define what machine learning operations, or ML ops, is, and you should describe some of the major considerations in deploying a machine learning model in practice. So machine learning ops is simply the continuous delivery of a machine learning capability. And some examples of this are as follows. So language translation services, being able to constantly have, say, Google Translate up and running, ready for users to use and leverage that model. Machine learning based malware detection, like a company called Silence that was uh, purchased by BlackBerry a few years back. They had the requirement where they needed to update their models on a regular basis to keep pace with the latest type of cyber attacks. Recommender systems, uh, things and solutions such as Netflix and Amazon, um, providing information to users about products and, and movies or whatever that they may be interested in. And then, of course, ad tech, uh, displaying appropriate ads for a user in platforms like Facebook. Algorithmic trading is another example uh, where things like regression models get used and updated in order uh, for financial services professionals to better select stocks. So we will discuss machine learning operations using a paradigm called the CD4 ML model, which stands for Continuous Delivery for Machine Learning. And there are three components to this model. First is the data. Second is the machine learning model itself. And third is the code. Now, what's interesting here is you might think in going through a class like this that it's all about the model. But the model is only going to function well in practice if the other two bookends, so to say, are also done properly. Um, a model being trained on garbage data is not going to provide good results. Likewise, a model deployed in infrastructure that is buggy and breaks down is not going to provide users uh, results of the predictive algorithm. So let's look at each of these in turn. First is the data. So we show many examples in this course, like our favorite uh, iris flower data set, where we have measurements of features. In practice, when you make inferences and train models, that data is domain specific, and it's got to be stored somewhere. And you not only have to think about storing that raw data, if you're using a feature-based approach, you have to make a decision. Do those features, in our case of our iris data set, the pedal width and the sepal length and all that stuff, does that get stored in a database or does that get generated uh, as we need it? Understanding data, data provenance, where this data has come from, designing a data schema. This is a topic in databases, but it has an interplay with machine learning. We need to have a data schema that supports our uh, our model training, our model inference processes, especially as new data comes in. Monitoring, monitoring the data, so if you think of uh, use cases like I mentioned earlier, algorithmic trading where the data is going to change frequently over time, we have to make sure that the data we are collecting going into the database um, is generally clean and not producing garbage. How the ground truth is defined um, this is also an important issue when you think of things like uh, how malware detection works. You know, how is it, what are we trying to define as something being malicious software? Is it something that is, um, you know, installing a backdoor on your computer system? Does it also include um, software that is aggressive advertising but is otherwise not harming your computer? Where do you draw that line? Also, there's issues of label quality because if we have data that is labeled, understanding where those labels came from and if they came from multiple sources, how do we uh, control that quality? All of these things are going to have a direct impact on the performance of your machine learning model in practice and, and are, are crucial to successful deployment. 
Now getting to the model itself, which is really the main topic of this course, we have things like the choice of the classifier. And throughout this course, we will expose you to different types of classifiers, or in the case of regression, different types of regression models um, that you know, work well or poorly uh, in different situations. Uh, the other thing is feature generation. It's a feature-based approach. How are those features generated that feed the model? And if it's something like a, a neural network, how do we architect that neural model? And how do we make decisions on when that is changed? Tuning hyperparameters, scheduling of model retraining, these are things that um, we need to constantly do in machine learning operations to stay on top of our models. And maybe you retrain your model every month and associated with that retraining, you're going to reevaluate what your hyperparameters are. You may also want to consider performance monitoring, even between times of retraining, to see if uh, maybe if your system's collecting data from external sources, suddenly it ingests data that causes performance to drop. And finally, experiments. Um, if you're working in a company and you have you know, a machine learning application that's designed specially uh, to increase revenue, it makes a lot of sense to think about, okay, well, can we leverage machine learning technology to further drive revenue increases? And many companies will have kind of mini research teams within their machine learning operations who will look at, hey, how can I improve my model a little bit? Maybe if I change my features or my neural architecture or my hyperparameters, I can eke out a bit more performance. Then the third piece of the CD4 ML model deals with code, and there are decisions here like, do I purchase infrastructure? Do I buy various cloud services from Amazon or, or Microsoft or Google uh, that allow me to deliver? Or based on either cost or uh, special requirements, should I develop infrastructure of my own? Now, with purchasing versus developing infrastructure, there's always trade-offs. If you're purchasing infrastructure that starts to uh, uh, wedge you to a given vendor who's providing that infrastructure services. Likewise, if you develop your own, you now have to be on the hook yourself to maintain that custom stuff. So there's no easy answers, but it, the best way to approach it is to be thoughtful and uh, think through what are the second order, third order effects of making this decision over a long period of time. Handling implementation errors is a really big deal with machine learning operations because a lot of times you might be deploying a model and maybe there's an error in the infrastructure or an error in how one of the features are generated that causes a drop in performance. And under being able to isolate implementation errors versus something else such as a change in data distribution that causes a change in model performance is really key in a successful deployment. There are also issues with security, whether cybersecurity, so things like patches and updates for your infrastructure systems because you want to keep those secure, as well as data security. And this is looking at everything like uh, personally identifiable information. Um, if you have any of that that's feeding your models, how do you uh, ensure that those people cannot be de-identified? There was a big case with Netflix uh, a few years back where data they provided to machine learning researchers could actually be used to identify users in their platform. And in addition to just de-identifying individual people, there are other adversarial um, attacks against machine learning models that need to be considered. And there was a big case with Microsoft um, three, four years ago where they had a chatbot uh, that um, people online were able to trick into uh, talking in racist uh, language. Finally, and perhaps most important, all of this infrastructure needs to be maintained. Um, this is, you know, most often you're going to be deploying machine learning infrastructure in some kind of SaaS-based system, whether it's internal to a company or whether it's going to be supporting customers of that firm. Um, it's going to have to be maintained if there's any kind of desired longevity. There is another dimension to consider that is technically outside the CD4 ML model, and those are business concerns. 
And these deal with things like cloud service costs, technical debt. Technical debt means that, hey, maybe we coded something up very quickly and it wasn't done the best way, but I had limited people and limited time, or I didn't want to purchase some extra cloud service, so I did it in a way that's uh, not really maintainable in the long term. Communication to management, which kind of goes hand in hand with the top two. How do we communicate our spend on uh, development and maintenance of uh, machine operational machine learning models to management? So they understand when we go to them asking them for money. Because if they do not, they will reduce budget and it will potentially lead to failures. Engineering decisions that lead to uh, personnel requirements. And this could be that, hey, maybe there's some kind of new package in AWS or Azure that we think would really, uh, we would really benefit from, but we need to hire a guy who specializes in using that package. And finally, and perhaps most importantly, our customer requirements. Is the machine learning model that's deployed, is it supporting the customer? And this is whether it's a customer of the company uh, that is getting the services of the model, or if it's an internal customer, someone who's using the model internally to make a business decision. So this concludes the lecture on machine learning operations. Uh, please stay tuned for more content.